So we're in Maya, in the Hypershade. Go to File in the Hypershade and say Import. And that will take you, if you've got your Maya project scene set up correctly, take you to Scenes. And you want to pick the PBR Mila MA. Click on that and say Import. And there he goes. It will come in and it will give you the shader. Now, if it shows in red like this, that means that the mental ray renderer is not turned on, which is easy fix. So if you come up to the top and click on display render settings, so right next to the shader ball, click on that and render using turtle. So you want to drop that down and you want to see mental ray. And eventually, this will update. There it goes. Takes a few seconds for it to update. It's not instantly fast. All right, now that's updated. Now, if you don't see Mental Ray as a plugin, then you'll need to actually put in, load in the plugin. And the way you do that, it's going to be the Windows Settings and Preferences Plugin Manager, and scroll pretty much a good chunk down till you see. Maya to MR dot MLL. So if you don't see Mental Ray as a renderer to choose from, you got to make sure you click on the loaded on the on this uh, Maya to MR. All right, close that out. Now we've got our shader in our custom shader for PBR. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over that shader in the hyper shade right click hold and I'm gonna scroll down and say graph network and there it is so you can see pretty big pretty lengthy in there and you can see it uses a Mila material which is the new shader inside of Maya and it's built in all these different layers of the material and again um, I will go over the basics of this and there I've even put some videos uh, for you on the learning modules to know the understand it to get somewhat of an understanding of what's happening in this shader. Uh, if you go back to the learning modules and back up one directory, there is a folder called Mental Ray Mila Shader Tutorials. Click in here. And here's some videos that I found on YouTube that really do a really good job about how the Mila material works right here. So if you wanted to get in depth a little bit more, here we go. And again, we talk about this a lot more when we get into um, my more advanced lighting and texturing classes. So, all right, let's move this out of the way. And the most important thing to remember is we're not really messing with any of the parameters here. All we're doing is inputting our textures into the empty texture slots so every time you come in here and you're roughly uh, looking for something you want to find um, a, a node in here that's called roughness underscore text or for, short for texture and this is where you input your different maps so here you'd put in your roughness maps here you would put your metallic map specular map um, down here would be your base color admissive and your normal so it's pretty, it, once you know the naming structure of what you're looking for, it becomes really easy to find what you, you, what you need. Now, we are gonna bring in multiple uh, instances of this shader, so you need to start renaming these shaders um, for every new one you bring in. So looking at our object, we're gonna bring in, we're gonna use the shader twice, one for the top and one for the bottom. So we need two of them. So we need to start naming these shaders appropriately. So if I come over to this object right over here where it says PBR Mila shader, click on that. This is where we can rename the shader. So here I'll just name this top crate shader. And there you go. So we know that this shader is going to be associated with the top of our crate. And then we're also going to assign this shader to it also. 
So since we made the shader, I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to click on this object. I'm going to click both of these objects at the top. Right click, and then I'm just going to go down there to the bottom. Hold, right click and hold, and go assign existing material. And I'm going to pick, I know this is a little hard to see. Let me kind of scroll up here a little bit and do this like this. There we go. Come all the way down, assign existing material, top create shader. And there it is. Now we've just assigned that shader to it. And let's bring up the hyper shade. There we go. And let's pop in the textures. Now you can do it from here by clicking in the hyper shade, the different ones. That's another way. Or you can come over to the little library here of shaders and go to the next tab over textures and here's the same nodes too so you can go through here really quickly just look at the name all oh, this is looking for the base color and then go find it so hit the little folder button over here so image name click on that go to where you have the textures and then click on it so this is the base color for the main panel which is our bottom so I want to start with the top there we go We'll input that and see so you can start seeing it's loading in uh, next one over is going to be the admissive um, image name and admissive load that and you can see it goes pretty quick once you know how to do this so this is for the metallic Uh, specular oh what's going on why is it not loading there it goes it's being a little stubborn um base color is already there this is already there um normal map normal map there it is. Load that in, and then we have which ones left? Roughness. Roughness, roughness, roughness. There we are. And there you are. Now all your maps have been put in. And if you kind of, well, my roughness is being a little stubborn. There we go. Now, for some reason, for the last map you put in, uh, the viewport tries to display it. So it's trying to display the roughness map, so it's all coming up black. So if you want the color map to uh, pop up, it's kind of weird. It's a kind of a glitch. If you go back to the base color and just come in here, and if you just come over here and just rename the texture. So if I just take the R off of a color, hit enter. It kind of disappears because it can't find it anymore. And then if you just type the R back in and enter, it reloads the texture, and then now it displays correctly in the viewport. So if you're having this, like you don't, you're not seeing your um, textures display, especially your base color, just kind of rename it temporarily, and then uh, hit the re hit the button. It will go blank, and then type the whole name back in, and it will sit there and refresh the texture, and then what you know, whatever texture was uh, last assigned to it is what it displays for that shader. It's kind of weird. All right, now we've got the textures set up for the top of the crate. Now let's do the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, Import. I'm going to find that PBR Mila again. I'm going to import that in. And now we've got a whole new set coming in. So if we go to materials over here, we want to find that new shader we added in. So right click, graph network, there it comes in. We want, to, we want to make sure we click on it and then we rename it. So this will be main panel. What did I name the other one? Main. Let's just name this bottom 
create. Make it easier. Shader. All right, so there we are. And again, it's the same process. Just go to the textures and wherever it's blank, look at the name and find that texture for it. So image name, uh, I'll wait and I'll do the base color last since it's the last one that gets its way. So I'll skip over that one. I'll go to the admissive image name um, again. Oh, so the bottom has no admissive map, so we're not going to use it. So we'll leave the admissive um, alone and we'll skip it since we don't have any, any emissive on that particular object. So we're going to go to the next one. Uh, this one is looking for the normal map. So we'll do the normal map from the bottom shader. Here in this again, instance, I named it main panel. So keeping your names straight is important so you know what you're doing. Specular. Right? It's having a hard time selecting the textures to display. It's kind of weird. Roughness, so you always have to kind of double click. I think double clicking helps. Oh, this one is metallic. That goes. And then now I'm going to go back to texture for the base color because that's the last thing that gets displayed. Now, if I wanted to update the textures in these little thumbnails for each texture node, all I have to do is right click and say refresh swatch. And it will actually go through, right click, refresh swatch. And it will go through and it will update each one with the textures. So you're not looking at this basic Maya icon for shaders. So right click, refresh swatch, and there you go. So let's go assign that new shader to the bottom of the crate. So I'm going to hide the hyper shade, and I'm going to go down to where it's green or an unassigned shader, and right click over it, go to sign existing material, and then I will pick bottom crate shader and there it is and it loaded it and then now we're ready to move on to the next stage which would be lighting our scene 